I have a little helper today. Pretty much about uh, Trump into office. <laughs> Uh, and we're watching Madman Reads and Rocks, aren't we, Biggs? Can I get your chin? Oh, oh, oh. Oh, yes. Hello, hello. It is Monday, so welcome to another reading vlog. I will quickly update you on this because I've just finished reading this. This is Penguin Mini Modern number 50. I have finished reading the box set. This is Wendell Berry, Why I Am Not Going to Buy a Computer. The great American poet, novelist and farmer argues for a life lived slowly and the value of home. I did not like this book. I pretty much disagree with everything the author was saying in it. Granted, he did write it in about 1988, so it's not even relevant anymore. Not really sure why it was included in the Penguin Mini Moderns, to be honest. I think if you read this as a writer and you follow what Wendell Berry is saying, you're doing yourself a massive disservice, your output is going to suffer, you're going to struggle to keep up in the modern publishing industry when people expect books out every six months or whatever. And it's just a load, of, oh, it really annoyed me and he was talking about like, oh I don't need a computer because my wife types all of my notes up anyway. And then he wrote a rebuff to all like angry feminists being like, stop getting your wife to do all your typing. And he's like, I didn't say whether I pay her or not. And he still didn't clarify that point. Regardless, I mean, even when I used to handwrite stuff and when I still do handwrite things like journals and notebooks, I still ha type it all myself. I don't get Becca to do it. I think that's really disrespectful like to get someone else to do it. And that's one of the reasons why not writing with a computer is dumb. Because you have to write something and then you have to type it up again before you can even do anything with it. And he's like, oh, well, I find it easier to go in and change my notes with a pen. It's like, yeah, you print it off, you bloody idiot. And like, in this day and age, how are you meant to, you couldn't be an author without having, without typewriting your work. Like you would, you know what I mean? You can't, gone are the days when you can just rock up to your publisher and just give them a like, a photocopied set of typewritten pages with your handwritten notes all over them. You have to hand it over in double spaced, you know, Times New Roman, 12 point font size. You gotta use things like track changes and all this stuff that just, you couldn't, you would struggle to survive in the modern publishing industry without a computer unless you're someone like Wendell Berry who's 90 years old and has this reputation. But overall he just came across as this like, ignorant like ignorant pig-headed old man who's stuck in his ways and isn't going to change no matter what benefits are in it for him or his readers and so for that reason i don't have to give it a one out of five I, I just really rubbed me up the wrong way i didn't like this book at all and i'm kind of really disappointed that this is how the penguin mini modern series ended and as well i thought it was going to be good because i'm all up for like anti-tech stuff because i mean i'm i'm into tech but i also I'm into like the field of researching text effect on our mental health and all this kind of stuff. So if there were any good reasons for why he's not going to buy a computer, I would have appreciated it. But there weren't any good reasons. He was just like, well, I don't want to be in the thrall of IBM and the electric companies. And I'm quite happy writing by hand and getting my wife to type it up. And actually, when you look on something on a computer screen, it's very hard to change it because you feel as though that's the final version. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> Maybe you do, you weirdo. <laughs> and then the front page, the cover of it's peeled off as well. Yeah, disappointment. Disappointing end to the Penguin Mini Moderns, but I have at least finished reading all 50 of them now. And uh, I will do some sort of video where I sort of rank the best to worst or something. I don't know, I haven't figured out what I'm gonna do yet. But uh, yes, so there is that, and now that that is out of the way, it is time to start this week's buddy read, which is Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson. Shout out to Anthony Andrews, who has the same edition to me because I sent it to him. Uh, yeah, I started reading this as a kid and never got through it, so I'm hoping to finish it. And like, I do, I like Muppet Treasure Island, and I like bits of like what I know of the story, like the black spot, the idea of the black spot, the the page being torn out of the Bible, having a big black dot being put on it and that being used as kind of a warning. So uh, I'm really stoked to get, get, get into this and hopefully it's better than <laughs> Wendell Berry's bollocks. I'm associated with my uh, booktube page, but I'm not. You're watching booktube, Biggie. Well, I'm not opposed to the idea. Uh, it's a meaning and you certainly can. It's B-B-B. Perhaps it. Mmm. These are like vegan cheeseburger swirls. And we're watching Paradise PD. Oh my God. I am dead. I'm a ghost. No one can see me. Well, no need for this polyester prison. Boogity boogity. 
As you can see, Biggie is here helping to make sure that my books have been sat on. Aren't on you, Biggie? He's like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I want my full majestic glory on display. What are you doing? I was going to put the camera there. Are you comfy down there among the books, Biggie? Yeah? Oh, I mate. Here we go, my fruit loaf. It's got dried fruit in it. He's, he's being a little bit of a cheeky monkey today, aren't you, Biggs? He's, look. These are, my, literally, these are my cheeky monkeys, not yours. Those are mine. And he was trying to eat my bread a minute ago. And, Biggie, weren't you, when I was reading this, he came and sat next to me, and started nuzzling my head, like my leg, so I stroked him. And then he literally bit one of my green tabs and pulled it out of the book. It's on the floor down here somewhere. Biggie. Out of print now, so Biggie, they're not for you. What's this? Oi. Biggie. Oi. Those are actually pretty gross. I do not like them. Cat. She's still in Fairyland. She is like. She hasn't quite given up on the quest, but she just. I think we're watching. It's Luna Lovegood. And she's bloodthirsty and she's just causing all kinds of chaos in his family. It's been helping me to read. Uh, I'm going to go for my walk anyway, aren't I, Biggs? Yeah? Yeah. Biggie, why aren't you cuddling my foot anymore? Blah, 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 blah. Oh. Where's he going? I don't know. He's like going round. What is it? I see it. I kicked him in the bum. Wow. Looks like he's got gnawing on a beef. Today we're watching Cardinal Sessions. They do uh, music and stuff. All live performances. Biggie's like, I don't want to sleep. He's cleaning himself. Biggie, what's this? Hey, hey, these are mine. They're, they're my hummus crisps. Jesus. He's playing with a bottle top. Alright, so it's uh, vegan pizza for dinner this evening. This one's Becca's here, it's got olives on, mine does not. I'm watching Retza Pure, which is like a channel about... They basically laugh about video gamers being bad at what they're doing. There we go. Pop this in. Oh wait, I need to take a photo. It's ready. Yay. I'm not watching hentai porn games. Well, I am a little bit, but they're taking the piss out of it and the people who play them. Anyway, we have a biggie here, don't we biggie? Um, I am going to quickly do my reading update as I haven't done one for a little while. Basically, Beck has been hard at work and so because she's been working, I've also been doing a lot of work as well, trying to get ahead. But I have finished reading Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson, which was my buddy read for this week. Overall, I think maybe a 3.5 out of 5. I actually thought I liked the beginning more than the ending. By the end of it, I was kind of flagging with it a little bit. I'm also pretty sure I have read it before. So when I, I thought I DNF'd it as a kid, but maybe I did actually finish reading it. But I did like it, and I'm in the mood to watch Muppet Treasure Island now. And so, yeah. I can't imagine I'll ever want to reread it now, though. Uh, and then after that, I have just read Alice in Brexitland by Levis Carroll. You don't have to be mad to live here, but it helps. And basically, it's a 
like a rewritten version of Alice in Wonderland, but to reference, you know, the Brexit decision and uh, Donald Trump and whatnot. So, for example, so this is going to spoil Alice in Wonderland if you haven't read it, but basically at the end of it she wakes up and it's a dream. And uh, so what happens here... Um, so Alice, Alice wakes up and her sister goes, No, you silly thing, none of those creatures were here. And, said Alice, we haven't voted to leave the EU. Leave, said her sister. Of course not. Look, the news came through while you were asleep. Alice's sister held up her Samsung with its browser open on the BBC homepage. A huge headline declared, No to Brexit. Remain prevails with 99%. And thank goodness for that, said Alice's sister, for the alternative would have been mental. Oh, said Alice, I can't tell you how pleased I am. I was starting to think the world had descended into chaos. Not a bit of it, said her sister. In fact, the leaders of every EU nation are currently on their way to America to attend a peace and prosperity conference hosted by President Clinton. My, that woman is an inspiration. Also, you know all of your favourite celebrities? Yes, said Alice. Well, not one of them has died. Not Prince, not Alan Rickman, and certainly not David Bowie. Thank goodness, said Alice. But had we lost the thin white duke, I should have been beside myself. So obviously it's very topical. It's slightly less topical now, like two, three years later, but uh, it's still a good read. As you can see here, we have uh, as Farage as the Cheshire Cat. It's not focusing, but uh, anyway. And so next, I think I'm going to read The Road to Rangoon by Lucy Crookshanks, which is my second of two books for the indie read-along. So I'll probably do that, and then, uh, yeah, I'm still reading In Cold Blood by Truman Capote. I'm on page 220 of 340 as my bedtime book, so I'll probably just about finish that towards the end of this week. Um, and then I will switch back to my Ariana Huffington book. But in the meantime, I'm going to read this as my main book, and hopefully get to this before the end of the weekend, early next week. Uh, we will be uh, reading uh, Paper Towns by John Green. So yeah, all right, I'm off. We had to use up the strawberries, so ice cream. How is it, Rebecca? Yeah? Hello! Um, I am just, actually I'm not watching anything at the moment because I've just batch filmed some stuff. I uh, hauled a couple new bits. I did uh, a little announcement for a project that a publishing company that reached out to me is doing. Uh, I, I shared some info on that. And uh, what else did I do? Oh, I just did my review of Treasure Island. I don't know why I'm doing all this. Now I'm... I don't know what I'm doing. Um, yeah, reading is going well. I've started, actually. Uh, I was talking about, I think, in my last reading vlog, I read this book, The Employee Experience Advantage by Jacob Morgan, and that is to then write a 2,000-word uh, summary for it for a client. So I've been working on that, and uh, I believe I have the document open, yes. So I'm on 714 words of that at the moment, but I only spent a bit less than an hour on it, so, so that's good. Uh, I have been reading some more of The Road to Rangoon by Lucy Crookshanks. I've been enjoying this novel. But I don't know, I sort of thought this was a second book in a series, whereas it seems to be a standalone. I don't think... There's like overlap in terms of where it's set, but not in terms of the characters, I think. Which is fine by me, I'm not too worried about that anyway. Uh, it's enjoyable enough so far, on about page 60 or 70. Read a bit more of In Cold Blood as well. I had uh, a client call earlier today. Ambulance. So I had a client call earlier today with the client I am ghostwriting a book for. So he wants to have that ready for Christmas. So that puts some, uh, you know, that's going to be difficult because it, it means that we have to have a book finished by Christmas. But uh, it's only going to be about 30, 40,000 words. So that's pretty doable, I think. And uh, we're basically each week we're having a call to go through one of the chapters and then I'm writing up and whatnot. I, I can't tell you any more about the project, but... Um, it's an exciting one, it's one I'm excited and proud to be working on. So all is good really, all is good. I'm gonna do that, uh, Becca is finishing at like 5 p.m. today, so I am going to work until she gets home and then I'm gonna do my work, she may or may, uh, sorry, my walk. She may or may not come with me, we will see. And uh, yeah, all right, update done, I'll see you later. Yay! Also, I'm reading a book while this intro bit happens. I was
As Flint's first mate that voyage, three days east of Tortola in the Caribbean, Flint knew an island. I remember very well there's this That's bit where he goes, Jim! 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 Jimmy Jim! Jim Jim! I used to I used to own the soundtrack to this movie. I used to sing along. <laughs> Timber shiver my tail. I haven't seen this for like 15 years. Crazy. It's blind pew. Oh no! <laughs> the tension. What are you two doing? Uh-oh. 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 He is a killer. Here we go. Pea and lemon risotto. And we have some uh, mint oil there. The end result, look at that, very nice. We're watching Robocop. I was gonna go for a shower, but now there's a oh, he's gone, he's gone from my clothes. That means I can go shower now. It's being very cute. All right, listening to the audiobook of uh, Dracula, we're on part two, this is my reread of this month. Weirdly, Tim Curry's in this as well, Muppet Treasure Island, Dracula, it's gonna pop up in the adaptation of whatever the next classic I read. What's happening, Becca? What's happening? Yeah, you get ready for work. Not yet, you're just chilling and listening to Dracula, yeah. All right, I'm watching PewDiePie. And actually, I'm making a shepherdess pie. This is my filling. Just got to cook that. Okay, in the meantime, I need to do some water. Okay, so here's what I'm making. You can see here, that there is the filling. So that's got uh, carrot, leek, celery, uh, garlic, balsamic vinegar, chopped tomatoes, a bit marmite, some sugar in there as well. Uh, in here I am making some lentils which are then going to go into the tomato sauce. We're also going to add some frozen peas to that sauce a little bit later. And then over here in the back we have sweet potato chunks so they're going to boil hopefully soon. And then I turn it into mash. Then in these we put the tomato sauce and then just add to the top with the potato. Dame. Yeah, it all seems doable. Um, I've not been too great at talking about the books I've been reading, but the truth is I have just been uh, cracking on with The Road to Rangoon by Lucy Crookshanks. I'm near the end now. I'm not going to lie, I'm not like super absorbed in it, but I'm not, not enjoying it either. You know what I mean? I'm quite happy just to continue puttering along and just to finish it. It's probably not one I'm going to remember too well. I think... Um, with each of with each, the book before this as well what Lucy's really good at is creating a sense of place you know and actually the sense of time here as well because uh, you know there's various conflicts and whatnot going on and it's all set in uh, in Burma 
So yeah, I'm, I'm finishing this. I will probably finish this off tomorrow and then we'll hopefully, uh, I might read El Defo by CC Bell. I've got that and I think I can probably read that in a day. So I might read that tomorrow. As for my bedtime book, I am still on In Cold Blood. I think I'm on page 260 or 280. 280, I think, of 340. So a few more nights to go and I'll finish that, but probably not in this reading vlog. And uh, yeah, I'm making my food. I'm also gonna start like prepping for my next bookshelf tour as well, uh, which I might film tomorrow because uh, Becca's, Becca's working all weekend. So I'm doing a bit of working too, actually. In fact, I am writing four more articles. Currently doing the top 10 apps that track your iPhone usage. And then after that, I have, uh, what have we got here? The best podcast for first time dads slash feminist dads. What is wireless charging and why do I want it? And ways to preserve phone battery, which can include portable chargers. So my lentils are coming along, look. They, pr they need more water, but I'm gonna get up in a minute to sort this anyway. And then I think my potatoes are ready to be mashed as well. Hey Biggie, you all right? You having a nice sleep, are you? All right. Welcome back to it's looking good. It's me. Um, do you have any advice on like, people starting each channel? Here we go, they're good to go. Good to go in the oven. An interesting young adult thriller. And... It's Kit Kats can read. Also, the food is done. Look at that. Homemade chocolate ice cream with real chocolate in and we're watching something on Netflix called like first and last or something it's about people's first and last days in jail hey biggie they have to be put right back in away from my bowl holding cells they started on the first day you came to sit with me I think you might be a bit too fat for the footstool. Look at the angle you've created. It's sunk. No, you happy with that angle? You're gonna just keep cleaning? Okay then. Hello, Biggie. We need to get in focus, Biggs. Why are we not in focus? Ba, 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 ba. All right, it is Monday. Here is Biggie. Here is a Biggie down here. It is now Monday. Uh, I didn't record anything yesterday because I took a bit of a me day and um, I didn't really do anything. I just chilled and I haven't done that for quite a long time and I feel better for it. So, uh, but because of that, I didn't do much vlogging. I did do my walk still, so there's that. But uh, I'm going to love you and leave you and so is Biggie down here. And um, we're gonna call an end to this this vlog, and uh, I will I will update you on my books and stuff in the next vlog. Anyway, on that note, thanks a lot for watching. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read this book and if so, what you thought of it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.